Hi guys and welcome to Dreaming in Fibre. I am Sarah, your host from sarahstexacrafts.com. You can find the show notes for today's podcast over at dreamingandfibre.blogspot.co.uk. If you're on the YouTube channel, links to that will be below this video and if you're viewing it on Ravelry, I'll also try and include those above the video. How are you? <laughs> As I say, it's the end of March at ERA HQ, so um, I wanted to get a podcast out and wanted to let you know um, what I've been up to and what's to come here in April. So I'm going to do a quick time and review, then we're going to talk about um, some shop news because there's lots of goodies happening for you over there. Um, I'm going to talk about um, some works in progress. Um, you can probably see behind me there's a little pile of stuff going on there. So uh, I wanted to get through that so there's some exciting news there. And then also talk about um, a way for you to join in and craft along with me in this coming quarter. So uh, let's crack on shall we with time and review. So how are you doing? Spring so far has been really good for me. Um, been enjoying the brighter days, which you can see outside. Awesome! <laughs> yeah, really enjoying that. So it meant lots of walks with the dog. And uh, we actually went over to Bobby Tracy um, this past weekend, which was Easter. And had a really fantastic time there. Patch is a completely different dog when she's in an environment that she likes and, and feels safe in. So it was it was really enjoyable to to walk along and to see you know the buds coming out and bulbs blooming and that kind of thing. It it just really oh, it just made you smile, didn't it? <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to lots more of that and and hopefully I'm really hoping that the sun will stay with us and uh, we'll have a nice dry spring. It would be good. Um, what have I been else been up to? I'm looking at my show notes here. Wrote some today. <laughs> albeit quite briefly but I've, I've got so much on it's been kind of busy I wanted to, to sort of remember everything um, so yeah I've been enjoying spring also been enjoying um, spending some time with Darren having the Easter break early this year has meant that we've had that those four days off which was really quite good because it meant we, we got a bit done around the house and also we got to spend time together so that was really good um, the only downside to this month is I seem to have developed eczema. Yay! So, uh, if you've been watching the podcast before, you know I suffer with allergies, which are um, kind of made worse, I guess, by um, dealing with wool and um, being an, in, an indie dyer as such. So that's um, not always helpful. <laughs> so developing eczema, and this is proper eczema rather than the um, that sort of funny eczema that I get on my hands, which was a reaction mostly to lanolin. I haven't actually had that for the longest time, seeing as I've stopped um, handling any raw fleece throughout the year, unless it's right at the beginning of the year where I wash it ready for dyeing. So that's obviously worked much better for me. So now I've got to work on this other eczema, which has appeared on other parts of, of my body. Um, I went to the pharmacist and he um, recommended that I change my allergy tablets and also gave me some hydrocortisone cream as well so I'm hoping that that will help. Um, also thinking about making some changes to the way I work to um, handle maybe a little bit less fibre and more of the yarn but also to um, kind of consolidate all of that fibre prep that I do into one area of the month. Um, still working my way through how that's going to work and how that's going to work for the website. That news will be released in May. I'm going to make sure that by the next podcast I'm kind of, you know, up to date and got a plan in place. So I'll tell you more about that then. But um, don't worry, there'll still be a good amount of fibre from me. I'm not intending to not be the fibre girl anymore. So um, it's just a bit of a downer really to have for my allergies to have gotten that little bit worse, a little bit more quickly than I had hoped for. Um, although, you know, I guess I kind of knew it was coming in a way. So let's get off that down and get back onto sunny, bright new things. You can see here that I've got lots of works in progress to show you today, lots of, a uh, couple of finished things as well. So I'm looking forward to showing you those. Um, going to go into shop news now because there's quite a few things that I want to tell you about the shop and of course, introduce you to Colour Club. So hang on in there.
So you saw the picture of the Colour Club release. Yay, it's coming out on April 1st, so that's tomorrow. Um, hopefully by the time I get this video up it will be just in time for the release of that for you. Um, so I'm just going to show you um, those products up close so that you can see them a bit more and, and know what you're buying into. As you know with all of these things, um, Colour Club is a limited stock um, sort of option. So there's no subscription, you just come in, see the product, like it, buy it, job done, sent to you, it's all ready to go. So I've done a few bats for you and these are merino and bamboo and uh, the colour is fairly true there. So you've got fuchsias, bright blues, mints and uh, the theme of this is um, been inspired by textile artists this year for my colour club. So uh, this textile artist is Amy Butler and um, any of you who follow Amy Butler will know that these are some of the colours that she really um, works into. So I've got some bats there for you. I've also got some blue face Leicester um, top as well and that's got some of those shades in there. That would be really nice spun up or felted as well if you're a felter. And then for those of you who like a little bit of sparkle I've got blue face Leicester and sparkle. This is a um, slightly washed out on screen but it's a mint and a blue you saw that on the um, the picture earlier a bit more closely. So we've got those, they're in 100 gram bundles. Then on the yarn front I've got uh, mini skeins. These are all limited edition as you know. So we've got mint going through to a um, blue there. Mini skeins, cool. We've got um, sock blanks as well and these I've done some have got um, very slight stenciling on them as well as the sort of graffiti splashes. And this is another one which is slightly darker but you can see it's, um, it changes as you go through the, the sock blank. So if you're knitting up socks they'll ultimately be two different socks. If you're knitting up a shawl, which could be really nice, then you'll get a lovely sort of variegated speckled sort of blended look. Then I've got a limited run of um, my uh, barber pole yarn. This is a yarn that I've sort of discontinued as a main base. Nothing wrong with it, it's just it was a slow seller for me. So I've discontinued it as a main base and instead what I'm going to do is have it appear every so often probably in things like Colour Club where it can't be repeated. So uh, this one has, um, it's, it's mostly a sort of pinky purple colour and then it's got um, flecks and splashes of each of those colours more intensely and of course where you've got the barber pole that um, that makes a difference as well to the way that um, works up on the yarn across the length. The thing with these to remember is that they will knit up ultimately in a kind of mild effect um, where you've got the difference between um, the light and the dark on the strand as you knit it up. So yeah, there you can see it a bit better there. Okay, um, really beautiful to knit with, really easy and soft to knit with. It's 100% um, merino and you get 400 meters for that. And then on my Bambino base, which um, is really beautiful for things like shawls and things, this is 80% superwash blue face Leicester and 20% bamboo, 400 meters for the four ply or fingering weight skein. And this is a, um, it's my tweed effect or, or almost a bit like a, a speckle. And there are lots of different colours in there. Hold that closer. Yeah, there you can see it. Really lovely to work with this yarn. It has a, a soft sheen to it, which is perfect for shawls, but it's also really nice and squishy. It's next to skin soft, just as a merino would be. Um, but you just get that luster, not only from the blue face luster, but from the bamboo. And perfect for this time of year when you're thinking about lighter weight knits, so spring knits and then early summer knits as well. Um, 
things like cardies and that kind of thing so there is it there are sweater quantities of the yarn available so it's a case of coming in and buying all that you can when you see it because it can't be repeated because I don't keep the dye records for these although I keep a pictorial record of um, the techniques and, and yarns that I do I don't record ratios of dye stuff and that kind of thing so they cannot be repeated what I can do though is if say there were three skeins of that left and you needed six skeins for a project is I could do three skeins in a color that will complement that yarn so if that's something that you fancy then um, buy the three that you need in stock so you can make sure that you've got those and then send me an email just after so that I um, can send you just a PayPal money request for the remaining three skeins and I'll dye them up and send everything out to you all at once. That process takes about a week so yeah that can all be done if that's something you want. The same with the fibre as well, I can do a complementary colour to go with those as well, no problem. Uh, so as I say that releases April 1st and it's limited stock so first come first served go for it <laughs> off you go um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is shows first of all I wanted to thank um, the welcome spinners for having me um, visit with them a few well it's last week it was now um, on the Monday and they were fantastic they were really um, keen and to you know to sort of learn and listen um, in on what I was doing and, and how I was working so it was really nice to hopefully impart a bit of inspiration to those guys um, but also to get some face time with people as well and um, they treat me like a princess so <laughs> I can't complain they were really really beautiful um, um, a really beautiful setting and really beautiful people to, to be around so thank you so much and if, if ever you need me to come back you just give me a shout um, next on the events list is the Embroiderers Guild on the 9th of April and that's down in Cornwall it is open to the public certain hours if you check out my events page on sarahstechnicrafts.com you'll have all the information on that there and then at the end of the month is Wonderwall Wales where I shall be on stand U5 which is at the back of Hall 2 so um, as you come in the main entrance to Hall 1 walk right the way up to the back the very last row you'll find me and a bunch of other really big names actually this year so it's going to be quite busy I hope down our end um, I will have uh, lots of hand dyed fibre um, some bats as well I've got lots of yarn and I do have a mini skein wool so <laughs> if you're into your minis come quick because they can go really quickly for me um, I'm pleased to say <laughs> uh, and I don't want you to be disappointed so um, you know rock up as quickly as you can and I will get you sorted so that's it for shows what else have I got to tell you about oh yes PMP changes Royal Mail updated their prices they go live as of tomorrow um, I have managed um, to work up a cracking deal with Royal Mail so that my prices for the UK um, have remained the same. Not only that, but I have been able to extend that price to cover us up to two kilos. So if you order up to two kilos, it's only going to cost you £3.30 in shipping. Yay! I cannot be happier. Honestly, um, the first price I was quoted was they were thinking about four fifty, and it's just like, you know, I can't do that. Um, you remember I asked you to fill in a survey a little a little while ago and thank you to everybody who did it was so so helpful really helpful and it it meant then that I could um, really position myself in a place where I was confident about what you guys wanted so that I could make the right decision for the business going forward so really pleased to be able to announce that for the UK prices also good news for overseas as well before now if you ordered um, I think it was just a hundred grams worth so basically a skein of yarn um, it cost you one price I've now been able to um, better that price and get it cheaper and extend it to 250 grams so you can now buy yourself enough for a shawl and try me out um, so really pleased with that and the the prices increment on weight every 250 grams there onwards and they've only increased on last year by 5 to 10p which is really good because normally they increase by 50p so 
cannot have asked for more and um, could not have got more really so I'm really pleased with that and I hope that that's going to make a really big difference to you guys so thank you ever so much again for answering that survey it was really useful and I think really really helpful okay so that's all for shop news let's get talking about these projects shall we Okay, so I'm going to reach behind me and show you some of what I've been working on. Now, there's a fair bit actually for me this month, and I think that's probably partly due to the change in the weather. It being a little bit more sunny, a little bit closer to, you know, what we're thinking of as spring. It's just made me want to cast on all the things and make all the things. <laughs> so let's get on with it. Um, I'm going to start with spinning, actually. Um... I promised my mum that I would make her a sweater, a bit like the um, grey and hand dyed version that I did uh, probably September last year maybe, I think I finished it, maybe a bit before then. So this is the first bobbin, I'm using uh, my colour Dartmoor, so this is it in the braid. So you can see you've got lots of greens, purples and then reds and then mixes of the two and that's coloured Dartmoor and this is the single spun up and that's fairly good on colour so I think when it's spun up it will be probably about a DK and I'm going to ply that with my sarsaparilla colour which is the purple that I use in Dartmoor so they will be spun up together to make a two ply and I think that's going to be really lovely uh, she said she wanted something purple that purple is showing up a bit blue there it's probably a bit more red in real life um, but I think that will make quite a nice mix so I'm working on that I'm probably most of the way through the braid of um, sarsaparilla and then this will be the um, the next lot of bobbins worth and all in all that will give me 400 grams which will be plenty to do that particular top that I knitted for myself. Um, Mum's very similar sizes to me if not slightly smaller so I, I'm expecting that to be okay. The fibre I'm using here is Texel. I chose Texel A because it's um, nice and budget friendly in terms of price but also it gives me a nice warm snuggly feel and it is actually a real pleasure to spin up and I think it's going to be fairly um, robust to wear not maybe necessarily next to skin but the idea of this top was that you wear a long sleeve top underneath so I think that's going to be good and um, I'm enjoying spinning it so far very easy to spin as well the next thing is uh, I'm not sure whether I showed you this before certainly if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram you will have seen these um, but these are my socks so I'm using Fable Drops um, or Drops Fable print this is their long um, pattern repeat colour I've got one 50 gram ball and I'm making short socks so I've got um, one so far and I've just got a 2 inch cuff on that I went into um, a classic heel which I rib I always rib my heels I think it gives um, a more sturdy feel but also a better fit around the heel as well and then um, you know down the foot so there are a few colours you can see in there there's that beautiful sort of rusty dusty rose there's um, a grey uh, a sort of warm grey mull there and then these lighter sort of almost coffee colour um, browns in there which uh, you can see in the skein that's very true to colour there and the colour on that one you can see there so that's colour 623 and I am just started the foot on the second um, sock would have finished these but I've had um, a bit of cast on itis as you will see very shortly and decided to cast on something else so these have been waiting for me but as I've got plenty of um, shows and things coming up socks are the things that I'll take with me so I don't mind still having these on the needles the next thing I want to show you is um, 
my second Glastonbury shawl. As you remember from a few podcasts ago when I talked about Craft for Crafters, I sold the first one, which was a gradient against a solid colour. I've decided to do the second one in a speckle because I'm going to make kits for the website. So uh, this is my colour Ocean Breeze and yeah, that's it, and Night. So you've got this beautiful uh, navy against a speckle dye which I, I call my tweed effect um, which has uh, white, blues, limes and uh, turquoise in them. And the Glastonbury shawl is uh, one of my patterns on Ravelry. You can find that under the Sarah's Texture Crafts thing. You can also find that um, the link to it on sarahstexturecrafts.com on, under Learning Centre where I talk about patterns. So that's the, the shawl kind of done. I just need to block this now and then add the tassels. So I'm classing that as still as a work in progress rather than finish because I've got um, a, you know, a fair amount to do and obviously weaving in all the ends and things um, before I call that as finished. So hopefully in the next podcast when we're talking about Wonderwall Wells, because I'll do a podcast from there, I'll be able to show you that on the stool and show you the kits as well because I'm hoping to have kits ready for, for Wonderwall. So I've done that and then the final work in progress is a hand spun project. So I think it was a few years ago I spun up my colour Dartmouth, uh, just a regular two ply and it's come up to about an hour in weight and this is one of the balls and the second ball looks a bit more saturated but it's only because I've got to a certain place on this where a lot of the blues have hit together so it looks much more saturated than this ball but the colours are very similar. What I've done to, um, because this one seemed to, when I was plying it, a lot of the blue tones did hit each other, I have been alternating these skeins on this knit so I've decided that I want to make myself a coat and I hold that ball between my legs there <laughs> so I can show you the knit. So I'm doing a top down, I'm making it up as I go along as usual. <laughs> And um, I guess the, the starting point, if you want a reference for, for this knit, is um, the Anne Bud book of top down sweaters. So I've got, and this is literally three days work, I've got down to under the bust, so I've separated for the sleeves, and then I'm practically finished with the first sleeve. I haven't completely finished the design in my head so far for this. I'll show you a close-up of the, the colour as it's knitting up. That's it, that's perfect. So blues, turquoise, teals and then that flash of red. Normally I, I wouldn't wear a red in this colour but actually for this I think it's it's perfect and um, it, it's not too red, not too in your face. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing that and as I say, I've not completely finished the design in my head. I just want to see how far these balls will get me because I've got about 400 grams across the two balls and then I've got another skein of this which is about 100 grams. That's not going to make me this coat because the idea of this is it's going to be something that I can wear just over the top of a sweatshirt or something while I'm walking the dog just until we get into... Um, you know, warmer spring and summer, and then of course in the autumn I'll get a lot of wear out of it. Um, so I'm tossing up whether I need to um, dye some more and spin some more to finish the rest of the coat, or whether I introduce an, an extra colour and do a block colour at the end. I have an idea in my head of sort of zigzags and maybe adding like an oatmeal colour, but I don't know, we'll see how this progresses. It depends how this looks once I get both sleeves done and then a fair way down the, the body um, and then we can see A, how, f how much further I've got to go and B, what kind of looks good. <laughs> so I'll keep you updated on that one. I've got one finished item which I'll just grab.
Okay, so my finished item, are you ready for this, is from the last craft along that I hosted on Ravelry. And it's my colour craving, so my Stephen West colour craving. And in terms of colours, I've used pumpkin, I've used peacock, and then the red colour there is claret. And that's peacock and claret work together in stripes there in the centre. Really love it. Did you see the pictures at the beginning? Really love this. Um, did make some mistakes which I kind of talk about in blog posts which I'll link in the show notes. Um, as you can see, I think I may have talked about this at the beginning where I um, increased too rapidly in the centre. Can you see that kind of, those lines of puckering? Yeah, they didn't go away so what it, what it's meant is rather than this blocking out straight I've got this kind of weird sort of fish shape going on but actually uh, the way I in wear this is I wear it folded in half and wrapped around my neck. So you don't really see that as a problem because it lies perfectly flat. You see? So I just just wear it like that. Ta da! I'm so pleased with this. Honestly, it's 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 quite silly. And if I want to wear it one day with the orange showing, then I just pop it on the other way round. Oh, sorry, hit a box there. One of my stash boxes. Um, and I wear it round that way. And I just love it. I just love it. It's just the right amount of a splash of colour that I don't normally wear, this orange. Um, and, yeah, it, it's made so much difference to my life and the way I think about knitting, honestly. Um, so thank you, Stephen West. <laughs> but also thank you guys for knitting along with me and crafting along with me in the last um, craft along we had over on the Ravelry group because it really helped me to hammer this out but also to think about colour in a different way. So I'm going to start wearing, or start making myself colours that I normally out of my comfort zone but I feel would suit my complexion as it is now because as I'm getting a little bit older, um, I'm going to be 40 this year, my complexion has changed with the greying of the hair so, and, and I did start going grey from like 18 so um but most of this has been covered by hair dye up until now so this is the first time i've really seen how kind of white i am and so it's changed my complexion a little bit and so the way i wear colors is slightly different so i'm having to rethink how i wear colors and the colors that i choose so hence why i'm starting to knit on things like this that's slightly different slightly more pale versions of colors that i would normally wear thrown in with a colour that I wouldn't normally wear and it's making so much difference. I'm so happy with it. Honestly, I am so, so happy. So thank you guys for knitting along with me and stay there because I'm going to talk about the next craft along right now. Okay, so what are we up to on the Ravelry group this quarter? Well, I wanted to do some stash busting with you guys. I have a lot of customers who come to the store or even talk to me online and they're saying about having yarn diets and having so much more stash than they, they know what to do with. Well, this is your excuse to get out all of your Sarah's Texture Crafts fibre and yarn and start working with me over the course of a quarter to get as much of it made up into final things as possible. And we're just gonna use each other, A, as inspiration, but also as kind of motivation as well. So let me know what it is that you wanna get made, and I'm gonna, you know, G you up and sort of get you through it. And I also want you to get me through projects like this. So I'm looking at the spinning for my mum I want to finish. Also would love to finish this sweater. But then I've got um, some fibre that I've dyed probably September last year for Darren for a sweater that I want to um, spin against some of my straight from the farm top swabbles that I have in the shop as well. So help guys, help. <laughs> That's over on the Ravelry group. Um, I would love it if you could join in. There are no sort of strict prizes and rules. There are some deadlines of when I'm going to close it so I'm going to stick to the quarter but you know. I would really like you to craft along with me, so come and join in. And last but no means least, I want to talk about some things that I've been buying. God. Spring has made me so excited that I 
I needed to stash. I needed to add to the stash. And that's kind of the theme on the blog this month as well, as well as the stash busting craft along that I'm doing. I'm also talking about ways to um, sort of control the stash, to store the stash, but also to adore the stash as well. We sh it shouldn't be a dirty word, something that we're afraid of, and it shouldn't be something that we feel is completely out of control as well. So I'm gonna be giving you hints and tips on the blog throughout the month that will give you some ideas on how to control your stash. If you would like to know more about that, sign up to the newsletter at sarahstouchercrafts.com and you'll get that all free delivered to your inbox throughout the month. So what have I been buying? I bought from the lovely Tiverton Bead and Wool Shop and I'm just gonna grab their card. Um, their website is www.beadandwoolshop.co.uk and that's there and they've got a Facebook group you can see there as well and um, I know the lovely ladies there because I've been storeholders with them at other places so I tend to have a look and see what they've got when I want to purchase something anyway this is this purchase was kind of sparked um, sparked off by my mum really she saw um, these socks knitted up from um, from this yarn and this is the opal sweet and spicy colour saffron and uh, that's how they knit up so uh, she saw these socks knit up uh, by somebody else I think it was over on Ravelry and she said I absolutely adore those if I buy the yarn would you knit them for me I'm like yeah no problem <laughs> Mum's got the same size feet as me, so in terms of knitting, it's really not going to take much. Uh, she prefers a longer cuff, but I mean, that's the easy part of knitting a sock, isn't it? So I'm going to be knitting up those for her. That's really good on the colour there. And um, I think also out of that 100 gram skein, I'll be able to get a short pair of socks for me as well. So that was, that was my payoff for um, knitting her socks, is that I got a pair of socks for me as well. Also, <laughs> from the same range, which I'm going to knit mum um, a pair of socks from these as well. And, and I'll get myself a pair out of these as well. This is Sweet and Spicy again, and this, this is the um, Fruit Gum pair, or Fruit Gum colourway. See if that can... That's it, perfect colours. And that's how that should knit up. Looking forward to those. I think spring is definitely in the air, because I'm definitely influenced by those brighter colours and then couldn't help but buy some West Yorkshire spinner spinners yarn this is their Kingfisher colourway in the uh, four ply signature signature four ply there we go as if that's catching the colour right there um, again socks for me and then I haven't knit any semi-solid or solid socks for me. I've always gone variegated because I like lots of lots of colour in my sock. But they've got um, some solid colours in the Signature 4-ply West Country Spinners. And this is... hasn't got a colour name on there. Anyway, you'll easily spot it when you go on their website or if you go to the Tivert and Bead and Wool Shop website there. That's the green and that's very almost true to colour there. And I fancied maybe trying um, maybe a pattern sock. So if you've got any easy pattern sock recommendations, if you have, let me know. I fancy some green socks. Spring green. And it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I just love the intensity of that. Perfect. So that was my stash acquisitions. Um, Tibbet and Beedle Mall Shop do run coupons occasionally so if you are in the mood for some commercial yarn and they're always worth checking out this is their website again um, okay so I think that's it today I if the video quality was good from where I was filming at Bobby Tracy then I'm going to insert a bit of a patchy moment at the end here just so you can see patch in all of her glory splashing around in the water and stuff over at Bobby. Um, 
In the meantime, I'm going to uh, toodle off now. I've got to edit this film and then I've got to get the final bits and pieces ready for tomorrow's release of The Colour Club over at sarahstexturecrafts.com. So I will catch you next time where we'll be talking all about Wonderwall Wales and uh, I don't know, maybe a few purchases, don't know. Um, but certainly I'll be showing you around the stall and stuff and maybe saying hi to a few people as well. So keep tuned for that on the YouTube channel. If you want to be a regular subscriber of all of my news, then sign up to the newsletter over at sarahstexturecrafts.com. You'll also get a discount coupon just for signing up, so can't say fairer than that, can we? Okay, I'll see you next time, guys. Happy early spring and uh, dream in fibre. Cheers, guys. Here we are walking in Bobby Tracy. It's Good Friday, so happy Good Friday, everybody. I'm just enjoying the sunshine. Patch, you're gonna come and say hello to everybody. Hello. <laughs> I'll show you some pictures as we go along. <laughs> He's got caught underneath the bench. Yeah, Pat loves the water. <laughs> She's being a terror. And Daddy might have wet feet. <laughs> Patch. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> oh no, Daddy really is going to get wet feet. Be careful. Could be a UB frame moment. 250 quid, thank you very much. Okay, Patch, you're going to come and say hello? Hello. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm being clotheslined here. Straight around me. She does love us, really. <laughs> yeah. There we go. This is such a beautiful day. Only a few clouds in the sky. It's just so peaceful here and we've seen butterflies and lots of different types of bees and there's people about with their dogs but it's not super busy. So this is Bobby Tracy, now that I've told the world they'll come <laughs> and ruin it all for us. Found another spot. She's just so excited by water. She's the funniest little oh, this thing. Way. This way. She's such a different she dog when we're here as well. Too. No, she doesn't like going out of her depth. Do you, puppy? Eh? Hey? <laughs> you know, she did once by mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh no, I'm going to get clotheslined. <laughs> oh, podcaster out of action for a while. <laughs> <laughs>